goes. Go. Peace, peace, y'all. We about to get it together. We just try to uh, okay. There it come. All right, y'all. So peace, peace, Abaragani, it is Lam, Salam, Hetipu, Rahubat, Jinolako Ninani, Chief Noble Bandele El Amin, back on the scene, and in perfect timing, I've got my uh, guest host today, uh, his first time with New Kimmy TV, uh, I'm here to tell you about Minister Hashem Jabbar Odukan, is that how I say it? L. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. All right. Right. This is one of our ministers in the uh, in the Temple of New Kimmet, Um, and I am very honored to have you on today. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and um, you know I'm just I'm very you know pleased and happy to be here with you today, man. So, um, I I wanted to do a bio, but I'm going to kind of let you uh, do a little bit more of your bio. You know, I know this brother for a few years. Uh, I know he's part of the Nation of Islam, and that's where I met him through. And uh, I know he's very versed in a lot of different things, and he has a lot going on. So I'm going to let you tell, you know, more about your bio, if you will. Oh, man. Peace and blessings. Assalamu alaikum. Islam to the Moors. Shalom, shalom to the Hebrews. Uh, Abari Ghani. Uh, man, I'm so thankful to be here with you. Free the land. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to be here with you, uh, uh, Chief Bandelay. Uh, it's a blessing. Like you said, it's long overdue. Um, I've been, you know, traveling these seas of sin, came into consciousness around uh, 2000, 2002. And uh, I was in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, had graduated college, had finished my amateur wrestling career. And a uh, man, uh, you know, I started that spiritual journey, you know. I started, uh, I left uh, what I call facing east, or excuse me, facing west, you know, from the, the wrestling, amateur wrestling and uh, weights and uh, regiment and education that from that standpoint to turn myself east, you know, and I got more into uh, studying Islam, yoga, um, you know, meditation, you know, coming to consciousness in, in that time, but a man came to town. I had um, already gotten baptized, you know, and a man came to town, you might've heard of him called uh, Louis Farrakhan. He came to town and- um, Of course. You know, uh, he, he really didn't talk anything. It's interesting. He didn't talk anything about uh, religion, very little about religion. It was actually all about the Iraq uh, war at the time. It was right after 9-11. Uh, and uh yes you know, he was talking about yeah. it before. and so um i came back to dc where i'm from where i grew up my parents are daytonians uh dayton ohio and uh yes, sir dayton yes sir <laughs> joined the, the nation of islam on uh october of 20 uh 2003 and so to uh to fast forward you know in 2013 in dayton ohio uh, I met Chief Bandelay through a great giant in the Nation of Islam, one of the great captains of uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan through Cleveland, Ohio, Brother Tyrone Muhammad, a strong soldier who was leading the Dayton Study Group. And uh, he yes, was very okay. real skilled and versed in creating coalitions. You know, um, Brother Tyrone Muhammad, I keep saying my, his name because our brother transitioned, you know, very unexpectedly. You know, had a uh, yeah. accident at the beach, and uh, in, and he made his transition of, at, at the young age. I believe it was forty five, and um, so this this brother he was uh, organizing uh, a part of a Kwanzaa event 
in uh, Dayton, Ohio, 2013. And that's where, you know, I met my brother, uh, Chief Bandelay. Um, he was uh, demonstrating strongly, you know, his uh, more science, both in attire, you know, in, in culture, in greeting, in his uh, transportation, his his mode of transportation and registration, you know what I mean? Yes. And so uh, I also yes. befriended a great brother as well, uh, Anthony Gaston Bay, um, I see. I see. Who, uh, you, know, uh, you know, transitioned as well, you know, very unexpectedly, a great giant man. I love uh, that brother, man, because he was always, again, demonstrating, you know, being an industrious more. Let me say his name, brother uh, Anthony Gaston Bay. You know, just a, yes, a, a, a bowel change from Gaston Bay going back to the Washita. We're gonna pick up on that later. But uh, brother Anthony, he he would um he 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 kept, he would hit me. He would he would poke me with the nationality. You know what I mean? So what's your nationality though? Yeah, I understand you with the mess. That's cool. Yeah, no doubt. But what's your nationality though? You know, and um, <laughs> right. And because because we. We're not intellectually or um, scripturally weak. You know, we have responses, you know what I mean? And so we can uh, open up that dialogue real wide and, and he would stand on his square and I appreciated it. And so we would have, um, you know, jousting a little bit, but he always could uh, stand on his square and, and make his, his point and representing um, that great prophet, Noble Drew Ali. So I, I love that brother. But um, it was in, in 2013 that I had really gotten an understanding of the uh you might say the moorish paradigm um yeah i mean you know that's, that's a great place to start. i can go on and on and on but um you know that's that's how uh you might say we we began you said to kind of run down uh some of my resume man i went to uh arizona state university graduated there in um 2002 uh i, I was uh ncaa all american i'm in an ncaa hall of fame you can look me up. It was not Hashem Ali Jabbar Odo Connell then. You know, um, God gave me a vision in uh, 2006, approximately. I think that's when I made the legal name change. But I had it gave me a vision, you know, Hashem Ali Jabbar. You know, I was sleeping and I saw it clear as day. But, uh, but previous to that, my mother named me Quinn. Quinn Ryan Foster. You know, so Quinn Ryan Foster okay. record books <laughs> across right. the, the 50 states. You know what I'm saying? No, Quinn for y'all, he, he, he can't uh, deny me. You know what I'm saying? I'm in too many of their record books. So, um, yeah, man, Hall of Fame wrestler. Uh, you know, I won, uh, I represented the United States in Moscow, Russia in 1997. I was on the junior world team. Uh, Moscow was miserable for 10 straight days, man. It was terrible. You know, what I mean? ain't no place for a, a soul brother number one or number two or number three. Um, uh, I'm just, you know, kind of you said run down some of my resume, man. My my my, my uh, lineage, you know, as a Moore, uh, through my great grandfather, Bishop John Jamison Moore, um, who was of the Hebrew lineage. And, uh, you, know, you know, families, his mother was what they would call a runaway slave. She was born a free woman in Maryland and uh, ran away uh, with my great grandfather, Bishop John Jamison Moore, in her arms. But she was uh, born again, born a free woman. She was descendant of the Portuguese Jews, a.k.a. Portuguese blacks, a.k.a. Portuguese Jews by way of Haiti by way of um, uh, Morocco, Rabat, uh, Morocco, and by way of Al Andalus, uh, Cordova, and Lisbon areas of, of Portugal. And so um, the, the Hebrew lineage, um, some will call it Jew, is more properly, you know, you might say the teachings of Judah, but, um, you know, some would say being an Israelite or, you know, being Bet Israel, you know, from the house of Israel, you know, those are all lineages that, um, you know, it says to honor thy mother and fathers. And that's what we're doing here on Moorish American Week. We honoring our mothers and fathers, you know, giving praise to the uh, the great God Allah for this opportunity, you know, to be breathing, to be living, you know what I'm saying, to uh, be a more, but also be black and strong, you know, 
and uh, we blessed, you know. So um, that's some of my background. I can go on and on, but you know, that's some of the things I want to share. And it's, it's a blessing to be here uh, on New Kimmy TV. It's a blessing to be here with you, brother uh, Chief uh, Bandelay Elamine has been demonstrating for such a long time. So uh, I'm thrilled to be in service uh, to the temple, Moore's Temple of New Kimmy. Uh, and, and I'm excited to be here with you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Testing. Testing, one, two, three. Testing. Testing, one, two, three. Testing. Testing, one, two, three. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. Well, can you hear me? Well, I think you can hear me. I don't know if you can hear Chief Bandelay. Losing it. Okay, are you there? But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. Okay, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I see. We look like we got three people on. Okay. Are you? Somebody, uh, can you uh, give us a, a I think we do. Okay. Are you Happy Moorish American Week. All right. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. All right, all right. I had to. I was trying to do something on here, and they won't let me do it, so it kind of messed it up. Uh, but I think you're on there. I can see you on the screen. I, I know you were um, being heard by the people. So uh, that is that's a, that's a great introduction for uh, what we're we're going to get into today. Uh, and you know, yes, I did meet the brother. Unfortunately, it's crazy that we met. And the people that connected us are have passed so you know it, it makes me even believe that it was more of a reason why we connected you know than anything because these people made it they made it a mission for us to meet together and they're no longer here you know so um you know i think that's very like i said very special and it's important for where we're going to go in the future you know um but tonight, what we're going to be discussing a little bit is about Morris American Week. The Morris American Week started on the 8th, so it's usually a week long. Um, and we're kind of at the tail end. We're getting the tail end of the week. So I did want to get this video in. And um, we did have a sister that we was going to bring on as well, but uh, she wasn't able to make it today. So what we just want to discuss, you know, the fact that Moorish American Week and what it really is about, uh, you know, for those who know and have been on the videos, you know, we understand that Noble Jurali is the prophet for the Moorish Science Temple of America. And he's also the forerunner for the Moors in America in general. OK, so it's important that we look at this because uh, we have Morris America Week that venerates Nobu Ali and his works. A lot of us don't understand what Nobu Ali brought to the melanated people of North America. Um, you know, he was the forerunner to what we know as the Nation of Islam today. And uh, you'll also, you know, I, I, I've heard Farrakhan, Minister Farrakhan, um, discuss them. I've heard Elijah. What is Elijah Muhammad's? Was it his brother? Um, I believe it was his brother. I've seen a video with him discussing the Moors and he put on the fans and everything, but I don't remember his name. Do you, do you know? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't Elijah have a brother? It might have been John Muhammad. I'm not positive. Okay, okay. But, uh, you know, the fact that they even acknowledged them 
it's very important because I, really without Dovajur Ali, a, a lot of what we know as Islam today may not have even existed in the form it has. A lot There are a lot of similarities between uh, Dovajur Ali and even like the Nation of Islam. Um, there's another group, there's another sect that I think branched off of Nation of Islam. And I'm not talking about Clarence 13X, but there's a brother that they're very similar to the Nation of Islam. And I, I forgot the brother's name. He had a, he, I remember him even having a shop or a restaurant in Dayton at one point on Seventhal. Are you familiar with that? You know where the court, you know where uh, on Seventhal, right by Starfire gas station, somewhere in that vicinity. You said, you said, they had uh, a shop. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Yeah, it was it was like, man, it was probably like a 20, 2012, I mean, like, yeah, around 2012. But I I saw it. I thought it was the Nation of Islam. But then I got to talking and they was like, well, no, we're not part of the nation. But I'm like, clearly, you've had to be part of the nation because of how their whole setup was. Um, but the fact is, you know, that we've had all these different organizations, Islamic organizations, and a lot of them have come out of the Morris Science Temple of America. Even the name Nation of Islam deters to a nation. And so building on nationality, you can tell that that has its, its, its beginnings in the Morris Science Temple of America. Now, I don't know for sure, but you know, we've talked about it before, but we've said that Elijah Muhammad at one point was part of the Morris Science Temple. It has never been confirmed per se. I don't know if you've heard that as well, but it was said that he was part of the temple and they tried to show a picture, but it's hard to tell if that's him or not on the picture because it's a <laughs> it's not that clear. <laughs> but you know, like you know the picture where they have uh the, the all the Moors standing up on that picture. It's like all he got all the Moors and Noble Joe, at least in the front, they got like all these different Moors on the picture. They try to say that he's on that picture, but I don't know. <laughs> I do I do feel though that a lot of um the I would say the core or its idea I, ideology, some of them can be seen or come from the Morris Science Temple. Um so what Noble Jura Lee did for us, you know, was to bring us the understanding of nationality. And he brought a form of Islam to the American, the, the melanated American people that had not been seen before. And what he what he seemed to have done is he brought new age. OK, now I'm just, some more may disagree, but from my understanding, I see a lot of new age and Islamic and some tenets of Christianity fused together and he created what we know today as Islam is and with that he was the forerunner for a lot of not just Islamic groups but for Afrocentric you know when you, you when you when you look at being pan-African Afrocentric um you know he has to be put right in there with the rest of the brothers you know he's right there with marcus garvey elijah muhammad malcolm x um you know martin delaney ashe you know he's with them in the as a forerunner to that movement and like i said one of the things that he brought that you don't really see is the form that he said we're moors our nationality is coming from Morocco and he brought a flag. He brought a spirituality that hadn't been seen. And, and so he brought that presence to us that it still lingers on today. And we've had no, the, the, the whole week of Nash, uh, of uh, more science, the more American week is important for us more to not just to reflect on the works and the visions of Noble Drilly, but really for us to prepare for our future on where we need to go. 
And, you know, one of the things that I guess we're going to talk about tonight in our vision is economics. So with that being said, I'm going to shoot it back to you, my brother, because we know we talked about, uh, what was it called? The uh, it's a, it's an economic plan. So, uh, yes. so on the top of yeah, the great that great prophet noble Drew Ali, he had a, he said that you know economic security, it was it was necessary to be preached, and there was nothing more important than to preach economic security, you know. So, uh, no, the great prophet noble Drew Ali in the nineteen twenties, he was he came to us, he came to America, you know. He had a very short window of um you might say you know uh teaching preaching uh building the temple building followers he had a short uh, you know window it wasn't it wasn't 40 years it wasn't 20 years you know uh it was you know not even quite a decade really right so he had right. a short window and he never really had a significant malcolm x right to follow him he didn't have a significant Farrakhan, you know, uh, that no, no, no one that elevated his platform in the way some of the national representatives have done for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. But he came at a different period of time. He, as you said, predated them and laid such a, such a strong foundation for others to move forward. The great, you know, uh, Marcus Messiah Garvey, he called him, uh, no, uh, uh, Prophet Noble Drew Ali called him his forerunner, you know, and he laid down an excellent display of unity, an excellent display of economic development and growth, the idea of, of uh, blacks or the original people owning their own and being in unison and having uh, businesses, both large and small and whatnot. And so um, uh, Noble Drew Ali, I'm, I'm opening up uh, some of the Imperial archives. I want to touch on some of our uh, wisdom that we have, some of the knowledge in, uh, this is, you know, one of the return of the ancient ones uh, of the Washita Empire, the Washita files by Empress Verdiachi. And um, like I said, this is this is so important in connection to uh, the work of, of Noble Drew Ali because they, she laid a claim that they were cousins, you know, and she has a strong uh, documentation here that Moors, the original people were here previous um, to C Columbus, just as Ivan, Dr. Ivan Van Sertima said in uh, all of his great wisdom in the golden age of the Moors and his uh, library and volume of books that he produced and knowledge. But in this book, she has what's called the, uh, it's titled the Imperial Archives, you know, the ancient imperial research. If you look on page 410, she talks about the Imperial Archives of the Washita, you know, so we want to dig into to some of the files or some of the wisdom, you know, that that great prophet left us as we celebrate Noble Drew Ali uh, and this week that he gave us in. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chief Bandelay, but we're in the seventh day. Is that correct? The seventh day of the week or, or how long does it? Yeah. What, what's the day? The day is the 13th. What, what is the day? I don't think you said it go. It started on the 8th. Is it is it what Monday? Yeah, start on the 8th. So so it should be like ending the next couple of days and so um uh, monday monday or sunday sunday or monday and so one in our imperial archives here one of the great uh moorish scholars that i appreciate so greatly is uh a hopkins bay azim hopkins bay this uh this document the prophet of noble drew ali savior of humanity he shares with us largely of uh the works of the prophet and how he had businesses and how he had businesses in Detroit, how they had moving companies, how they had uh, laundry, um, laundry companies, how they uh, established a grand treasurer, how they had um, various businesses and enterprises, how he promoted farmland and enterprises and cultivating our own acres of land, how he promoted having trades, occupations of all kinds of people of sound mind and good character so that we can have our own village. He promoted having a, a village and he asked the, the followers, this is all in the book here and it's well documented. 
um, from the from his writings that he asked the followers to write in and let us know right to the business manager. He had a business manager, brother. He, think about that at the temple. He had a, a business manager. He said, write to the business manager and let him know if you would like to have your own town, if you would like to have your own chief police, your own mayor, your own alderman. He laid out a structure, right? So he already given a, a divine constitution and bylaws, right? We said we got the we got the information in the Imperial Archive. He gave already gave the divine constitution and bylaws, and now he's talking about a town. And then he laid down a, a structure with the specific individuals that have specific functions. But he also he said to preach economic security, and, and that no people could truly be a free people as beggars. And so he says in the circle seven that that it's not only for individuals to get rich. That's not the strength, but it's the strength of uh, creating an economy. So these are families or groups that come together and work together like the families and the groups at Moore's Temple of New Kemet. And so coming together, I have property in Dayton, Ohio. You have property in Cincinnati. We have others that have properties in Columbus and Cleveland. And so we come together as families creating an, an economy, engaging in trade and, bar and barter and commerce, fulfilling our basic needs of food, clothing, and shelter. But if we have our more schools, we already have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's one of the keys that is missing to bring us to knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, the proper knowledge and wisdom and understanding, the kind that will produce for us food, clothing, and shelter. And when we have that food, clothing, and shelter, we have love, peace, and happiness. And we can have freedom, justice, and equality. So we, we got that circular motion of our 12, of building our nation, building our government, building a Moorish town. He said he laid that foundation. And you see the overlaps between what the prophet did, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, and what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad did at a later time. They're following yes. him. So he had him as an example. But he also had the teachings from Master Farrar Muhammad. And you see, skillfully, through um, means of savings, Prophet Noble Drew Ali was head of a time. He had an upliftment fund, brother. An upliftment. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't say the church fund. I didn't say the, the building fund. He had an upliftment fund. He had an emergency fund, right? So before stocks and bonds, because the New York Stock Exchange is not that old. We can talk about the button agreement, you know, another late day and time, how those 24 okay. merchants came together to form the New York Stock Exchange. But previous to that, we already said that the Moors were already here. But previous to that, Noble Drew Ali had an upliftment fund, right? So before, yes, so before again, stocks and bonds being traded publicly, before a mutual fund existed, before an index fund existed before um the various uh shark tanks you know existed noble drew ali had an upliftment fund he had his own newspaper he had moving companies trucking companies he promoted having a grocery store in every uh city and yeah. temple so he laid down a a, a a sample of what you can do from city to city to city right a, a laundry mat right a necessity everybody needs to be clean because we promote being clean clean and wash yourself we promote being pure and clean wash yourself wash your heart uh, performing ablution washing your face uh, washing your hands washing your feet it is a symbolic reminder of having uh, uh, clean ways doing good with our hands wiping off the the, the sin and not doing sin again you know, so he encouraged us to have clean establishments, to have clean businesses, and not just to do business in our own community, but to offer our our uh, businesses and our services to other parts of the community so that we could compete based on not only product and service, but cleanliness as a people. Again, he came in the 20s, the Great Depression. There were no jobs. You had to find a way to find a way is during the time period that he lived. But like you said, he even still then brought advanced uh, uh, fu uh, futuristic thinking, Orientalism, 
he still uh, 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 had performances where they were binding him in chains and he would uh, escape, you know what I mean? So he was doing the Houdini performing act, you know what I mean? The three ring circus, you know what I mean? Um, um, right. so, so the economic program again, because he said to promote economic security. So he said to preach economic security. So when you preach, you got to have zeal. You got to be inspired. You got to have energy and you got to have love and be enthused about economic security. And so that doctrine, he said, we need a doctrine of economic security. So what we have today in the church is really a doctrine of, of heaven or hell when you die. That's really the doctrine today. No prophet, no Drew Ali brought the doctrine that God is man and man is God. That's the revolutionary teachings of Jesus. That is the revolutionary teachings of the re resurrected Christ. Not only resurrected from a, a dead horizontal state to a perpendicular, but resurrected mentally into his history, his heritage, and his culture. The knowledge of himself who, is, who he is and who the devil is, who his enemy is and what, who his people are and what his people need to do to come back into their great state of nationality once again as Moorish Americans, as Muslims or Muslims, as Hebrews, huh? as Jew Muslims, <laughs> as God. Not, not, not God, that, not, not the God that's falling out the sky, but the God that is forcing energy. The God that is force and power, you know what I mean? A God that can do a great amount of work in a short period of time. A, grand, a God that is the master of uh, mass, energy, space, and time. So, so Noble Drew Ali was ahead of his time. And uh, the, the, great, the great Elijah Muhammad, some would say apostle, some would say messenger Elijah Muhammad, a man, some would say like Jesus, you know, he came... He came after him, and, it, and if we read in his his final grand uh, lecture series was called the Theology of Time, Chief Bangle. Now, this is a man we're talking about that built an eighty million dollar empire. We're talking about economics. We're talking about business. And I think I started off telling you that I studied business, small business, and entrepreneurship at Arizona State University at the small at the business school there. Also studied uh, communications at the uh, Walter Conkright. School of Communications there at Arizona State University. Uh, I was a sun devil then. I'm a sun god now. I'm a black god. I'm a, a Moorish god now. But um, but but the noble Drew Ali's coming in, and uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad having him as a, a, a study guide, as an example of someone to come before him. He he laid uh, such a, a a strong foundation that he really did everything that Noble Drew Ali said he wanted to do. He really did all but have a town, you know? He was uh, buying so many properties of farmland uh, uh, in the states and out of the states, in Georgia and Alabama, you know, in Honduras. He was importing fish from um, Japan, from, you know, the Pacific Ocean. He was bringing tons of fish in uh, through uh, 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 the ports in the south I believe it was Alabama or Louisiana, and distributing the fish through uh, through the mosque. And he set up restaurants in which they ate their, the, the, the believers ate their own food. He set up grocery stores right. where, the, where they grew their own food. He employed uh, 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 farmers. He employed journalists and had his own newspaper like Prophet Noble Drew Ali had the Moorish Guide newspaper. And in a newspaper, he could tell his own narrative like the Moorish Americans need to do today. They need to badly tell their own narrative because if we go and do a Google search of Moorish American today and what the news is saying about Moorish Americans, it's not as positive as the legacy that the great Prophet Noble Drew Ali left. But the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, again, creating an $80 million empire that's guesstimated, averaged by Ebony and other magazines is probably like, you know, closer to a quarter of a billion dollars today, right? Had a, had a, a big plant uh, of uh, putting out a million Muhammad Speaks every week, international. Prophet Noble Drew Ali had the Moorish Guide, national, going around the country. 
And so we learn this economic program again to duplicate today so that we can do something for ourselves. Prophet Noble Drew Ali had in the Moorish literature, he talks about a sound economic plan. And in the message to the black man, you're going to find the same thing, a sound economic plan. There's an overlap in the specific language. And they are not opposing because in Islam, you believe that Allah is one. Allah is he who is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He begets not, nor is he begotten, and there's none like unto him. So Elijah Muhammad and Noble Drew Ali are not clashing. They are together, sent by the one. Exactly. Together. Exactly. So it's not this one versus that one and the other one. No, no, no. You know, he who sent me, you know, not he that sent me, he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. So based on the one that sent him, the great God Allah, you know, that prophet Noble Drew Ali laid a sound economic program as an example. Most honorable Elijah Muhammad took it and, and, and you, you could say ran. He, he did something. Chief Bandelay with the three year savings plan. This is a core, yeah. a core part because he established a bank in Chicago. So he says, send your nickels and dimes, send your nickels and dimes every week and we'll send you a receipt. Send your nickels and dimes and we're going to buy farmland. We're going to buy restaurants. We're going to uh, open local business bakeries. We're going to have sewing plants. We're going to have uh, uh, canning factories. And he did those things with the nickels and dimes of those people that believed in him and believed in his message. And so his, his plan was a do for self. It was not get a job. It was do something for yourself. You may have to get a job to work your way to doing something for yourself and to being fully independent, but the mindset the, the, the atmospheric conditions, the spiritual vibrations sent out through sound traveling at 1,180 uh, uh, feet per second. You know what I mean? Sound traveling at a vibratory pitch. You know, um, he, 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 his light was so bright. Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan compared the light of Noble Drew Ali. He said it was so bright he couldn't let it out all at once because when you're in complete darkness, 1920s, the average black man and woman, the average Negro, the average colored person in the 1920s, the Great Depression, you know, so he couldn't release all the light at once. That'll blind you. You can't release right. it all at once. He said, don't 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 hide your light under a bushel basket. But he, but he said, you know, you got to open the blind slowly in the morning, you know. And so he was just there that short period of time. But you had a great one that followed him and honored him. He didn't change the bays and the L's to an X when they came to him. You know, he respected and he told his followers, as the minister told us, to respect that prophet, Noble Drew Ali. But what I found, Brother Bandelay, is that the core teachings of Noble Drew Ali, the core teachings, I'm a fundamentals guy. I'm a fundamentals. I'm a, I'm a, a wrestling champion and and, and and when you're a champion you do you, you drill your techniques you drill your skills over and over and over and over and over and over and you have a, a, a fundamental basis of your skill set you know what i mean you have a mastery of some fundamentals and um the prophet prophet noble drew ali he gave fundamental teachings in the holy quran of the more science temple of america he gave Fundamental teachings. I'm trying to get my camera lined up. Fundamental teachings there. He gave fundamental teachings in, in the 101s. The Quran questions for more Shemari. That's a fundamental teachings. He gave fundamental teachings in the divine constitution and bylaws. Fundamental teaching. That's fundamental. He gave fundamental teachings in the in the Moorish literature, in, in his own writings that were articles that he published through various newspapers through the public domain. You know, there are other information out there, but these are the core teachings, the core that you, that as a more, as a Moorish American, in Moorish American week, that we want to have a level 
a strong understanding of him, the man, the history of the man, the writings that he left, that he gave. And then we can have a better understanding of what we are to do and how we are to operate. Because a lot of today of Moorish America is inspired by C.M. Bay, one of the great, great, great scholars, uh, a product of Islamism under Noble Drew Ali. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the, 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 Moorish, the Moorish divine and national movement today is based off of uh, law, you know, uh, that that was inspired from the teachings that, but it's not necessarily the fundamental core teachings. Right. So some people have skipped off the fundamentals, right? Have, have ignored the fundamentals and they'll go to those complementary teachings, right? They'll go to those compliment, but they don't have the found the necessary foundation of the truth right. that the man brought or the history of the man and what he brought and what he taught. And so that's some of the opportunity right. that we have in 2024 as Moorish Americans. But I think there, there's a great opportunity in studying the man. Uh, I produced this, this document and you can find it at our trading post at moorzion.com, M-O-O-R-Z-I-O-N.com. This doctrine of economic security, I took a specific uh, excerpts of his writing is all from his writings, just excerpts of, of his writings, because as a student of business, Chief Bandelay, as a student of business, to look at the teachings of Noble Drew Ali from a business perspective. So when he says black, according to science, means death, I say, OK. And I say also say black, according to business or to accounting means profitability. Yes. <laughs> right. And so we look at his teacher. He said he had an upliftment fund, a fund, you know, not a pension fund. I didn't say, you know, not a uh, not a, a stock fund or a bond fund, you know, not a capital fund, but an upliftment fund. He was, you know, above his time, you know, um, he he talked about being in industrious and formed a manufacturing that, yeah. Money. Come on now. That's the word right there. That's the word right there. Industrial. Manufacturing. Manufacturing. Yes. So so yeah. when you manufacture, because they, I, I don't know of any African American or Moorish owned manufacturing companies of anything. Anything. Okay. Yep. Manufacturing. That's a that's an excellent word because you have factories, right? A canning factory, right? Uh, uh, a uh, automobile <laughs> industry, they take various parts that are procured or bought or purchased from all over the country in the world. It might be a 10,000 parts in one car, one product, you know what I'm saying? One service. Exactly. All those, all those but, the, but the, the main, again, back to the fundamentals, the main Fundamental is land, the earth, because steel, oil, right. gas, right. energy, natural resources, silver, platinum. You know, if you go through the whole periodic table, cobalt, all of these natural. See, Islam is the nature of Allah and the nature in which he created everything. It's a law. It's natural. So when I say nature, you can think the woods or creeks or hills, right? When I say nature, you can think the sun, the moon, the star, the sky. You can think nature, but you can also think of being naked. Nature. You know what I'm saying? You can also think of a dog walking on all fours. Because if he stood up and walked on, his, on two, that's not natural, right? So we're talking about going to the land is the nature that we have to go to to extract the materials to manufacturing. So he brought, Noble Drew Ali brought the Moorish Manufacturing Company in the 20s. Again, 
doing the, the Houdini, doing the, the magic, healing and curing the sick, giving sight to the blind and helping the dumb to speak again. Manufacturing. He was manufacturing a new people with a new idea. He put a thought into your mind and helps you to manufacture a new reality, not as a Negro, a black or as a colored, but as a Moorish American being part and parcel, not over here, but together as one and to be a citizen, to be connected to the land and to the government in the 20s. He said, no, we have a land, Morocco, descendants of Morocco born in America. He said he gave us the lineage of, of Moors going back as ancient Moabites, not Moabites, he said, ancient Moabites, giving us a history as the founders of Mecca, not just those who go to Mecca to pray, but as the founders of Mecca. Huh? He gave us a high wisdom as being a, a Moorish American, as not being a Negro, Black, or colored. So he gave us, they say, 101 keys. He taught us the lineage of Jesus being from the house of Judah back to the Hebrew lineage. He taught us that Solomon was of his lineage and David, King David was of his lineage. He taught us about the history of Jesus before he was 33. So he unleashed the, unleashed the locks, the rusty locks on our brains, huh? With the knowledge of a Jesus that the church didn't have. He said that came from India, that the people from the East held it back for a period of time. But a, 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 a dark skinned man, a Moor came to bring it to America. And so here we are in Moorish America week, you know, uh, decades and decades later. He said, I said earlier, brother, that he didn't have a, a Malcolm X then. He didn't have a, a Louis Farrakhan representing him today. But 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 hey, he got a, a Chief Bandelay and a Hashem Jabbar Odo Connell talking about his doctrine of economic security today in 2024, leaving out of 2023. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited, brother. Yes, I'm, up, up. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm, I'm feeling good. I think we we hitting on all cylinders over here. That's how yes, good sir. God has been. And we should be thankful, man. We should be thankful. Yes, yes, he gave sir. us our own flag. You know what I mean? He gave us our own colors. He said red like the sun. You know what I mean? So we put the, the knowledge and the wisdom. He said, you a sun because you shine like one. That's what our, some of our rappers say. No, but Drew, Drew Ali ain't say that. But he said, you a, you a sun because you shine like one, man. We, we put the, 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 the dome, the, the, the color on our head because the wisdom, the light of God is, is, is in our domes. Jesus taught us about the kingdom. He preached the, the coming of the kingdom. And no, no, but Drew Ali, he brought that kingdom with us in the word, in the wisdom. In the knowledge, in the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America, so 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 that's my story, Chief Bandelay, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I know that's right. I'm right. I say, I say, I say. <laughs> very very well, very very well, man. I mean, you know, Noble Draw Lee. One of the things that I that I constantly go back to is the nationality, and the reason why I say that is because. You know, right now, today, we talk about the black nation, the nation within a nation. We often speak about, uh, you know, black power and, and, and nationalism, but it's always on the surface. I felt like Noble Jura Lee was the catalyst for bringing that term into what it is today. And so when we talk about nationality, He's trying to show you that in order to have a nation, you have to have certain components that are necessary in order to, to build that nation and to create one. Okay. One of the things we discussed was being able to link you back to something besides slavery. You know, the fact that when we look at today, all the thing, all the video, all the movies, Everything that, that we show always links us back to slavery, you know. Um, the fact that he says, hey, we ancient Moabites. We, we go back to old man Cush. You see what I'm saying? He shows, you know, biblically where we come from. 
but not just biblically, but he also showed historically because he talks about Moroccan, but Moroccan being the smaller part of the Moorish Empire. So now we're talking about this em empirical um, entity that existed before slavery. So, you know, we don't, you know, we, we know about the Songhai Empire, we know about, uh, you know, the different empires, but the Moorish Empire was a very large empire on the fact that it was, because you had these seafarers that was going across the world to create empires. You know, we talk about, they say, you know, the Moorish Empire was in America. So, the fact that he linked us back to our forefathers, which we had been cut, that 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 tie had been cut and severed due to slavery, and now coming into the into the 1900s, you know, what 30 years, 30 40 years after slavery, you know, the so-called black man, the melanated man, was trying to find himself. And, and in the 20s, now I will say this too, I mean, this is like correction, because, you know, in the 20s, like Noble Jura Lee died in 1929. That was just before the depression. So what, the depression happened in, after 19, well, 1933, the stock market crash. And so, you know, that's, you know, you got the, the depression and really you know the nation of islam really picked up those pieces after nation after noble jury passed they picked up the pieces and they're the ones that carried his his legacy in a lot of ways they carried the legacy and became a strong formidable uh you know nation themselves even up to this day but the fact that no, what I'm saying with Noble Jura Lee, he's the one that made us look at what do we need to create this nationality. He gave us the history. He gave us the biblical because you know biblical, you know, it's very important to to our melanated people. It's you know we living in a Judaic, uh, Judaic Christian society, and so to be able to show a legacy, you know. To link you back into the Bible and to show you as a predecessor to even the Europeans that are in the Bible, you know, gives you a, a sense of self uh, gratitude. It gives you pride of being who we are, you know, and, and him, you know, him coming around in that time frame, like I said, you know, around with, with the with the Marcus Garvey, you know, they call Marcus Garvey the uh the the john the baptist if you will to you know elias i mean uh to, to noble draw lee and so with with them bringing this sense of a flag bringing a history bringing us then then he started to form government people don't understand that the, the more science temple of america is a government or it was it was set up to become a government he used religion as protection. And that's what's very important today is that him using not just the civics, but him bringing religion. And then he's showing you how to create a re religious entity because he became the prophet. You always need a prophet or someone who has spoken to God or is part of God to deliver you because this is how you see it in, in in the biblical traditions the quranic traditions somebody is called out by god to create and to be the model for this new way or this new life and so he's showing you like hey he brought a religious text he became the prophet Okay, so that you had you didn't have to no longer depend on the European for your religious 
understand it. You didn't have to look toward a European for your <laughs> And then, you know, like you said, later on with the nation of Islam. So, you know, I, you know, he doesn't get the credit that he should. You know, I, when I, as I was coming up in this, you know, like I've been studying since like '92. I, I think I, I came into my understanding. I can say kind of through the nation of Islam because what woke me up was Malcolm X. You know, I tell this a lot of times, but I was. I was awakened in my slumber by teachings of Malcolm X. His teachings at that time was directly from the nation of Islam. And so he he put me on that path. And so I had to wake up and realize that the black man was God. You know, through those teachings. And a lot of people today a lot of people today try to put Islam down. They try to put the Prophet Nobujur Ali down. They try to put down the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But I look around and I look at my Afrocentric brothers. I look at my Pan-African brothers. I look at my Hebrew Israelite brothers. And I look around and I say, well, look. Look at the work that has been done. If, if it wasn't for Islam, we wouldn't have had a Malcolm X. If it wasn't for the nation of Islam, there wouldn't have been a Malcolm. Okay, there wouldn't have been Claire's thirteen X. There wouldn't have been a lot of the people that we look up to today if it had not been for Islam. I look. I tell people a lot. I had like a few years ago. Now I don't know. Hey. Let me let me ask you before I get into this. You know, um, brother Nuri Muhammad. You know, when I went to see him a few years ago, we was like we, when we went to see him, we went to see uh, Farrakhan. When we left Farrakhan, you know, after Farrakhan gave us this fiery message, you know, you know, and, and, and woke us up. We left. We left the uh, the place. And we was like, okay, we hungry now. Where are we gonna go to get something to eat? Now we had just left, and I'm not gonna say the brother, but the brother said. Let's go to Cracker Barrel. He's like, we just left. We just left Nation Islam. We just left Farrakhan. And you're talking about going to the Cracker Barrel. Right? So we was like, nah, nah. So I, I can't remember who it was, but it was one of the brothers in the car that said, uh, no, I got a place for us to go. And so he took us over to the Nation of Islam's they had a plaza and they had, uh, you know, that restaurant and they had uh, uh, a look like a beauty salon. And then they had a school right there. And I sat there and I watched all the brothers from the nation of Islam come in there to eat. They had Farrakhan playing in the background. And I looked and I said, now this is what I'm talking. This is what we talk about. For anybody who doesn't have to believe in what they their, their, their religious belief or the, some of the things that's happened, but I look at the work that is being done today and how I see the economic plan manifesting. And I say, y'all can't say nothing until y'all do what they doing. Until you do what the nation is doing. You can't, you don't have anywhere to talk. OK, so, you know, the, the fact that. Even today, the nation is still showing us how to do these things, you know, and how, how to create businesses and create community, because that the nation is not is a community. And, and they show how they support themselves. And that is very important in the 2024, because we've got to. We got to carry that same idea and understanding to the temple of New Kimmy, but to not just to them, but to the melanated people in our communities that are not necessarily part of 
the core groups. We have to show them that this is more than just for us. This is not just talk or gander, or this is not like the past and history. This is today. And another thing that we that you said that, that we talked, me and Brother King, King L. Bay, me and him discussed these things as well, is that the fact that we do not have any manufacturing plants. How can we really be taken serious as a people if we don't manufacture anything and contribute to humanity? Because one thing, if you look at this, we we buy cars from other people. We don't own these cars. These cars are owned by General Motors. They're owned by Ford. They got the patent to these cars. We buy them and use them, but we don't own the name of those cars. These cars are created by other people. And a lot of them are created by what we call our enemies. And we we don't care. Like even, even if we got a gun, our guns are made by Smith and Wesson. These these the things that we use on the day to day basis are owned by the oppressors, and we don't manufacture anything for ourselves to show. You know, these things. One of the things that Nova Jurali did, not just that he created businesses and restaurants and, and different like laundromats, restaurants, grocery stores, but he also created products. One of the products that he had was the um it's it's the more like it's the it's like it's like a medicine that you would take you would drink a, a, a tablespoon a day and it's supposed to help your health. So you know, being able to create these products is important for us in 2024. We have to begin to create products. And I know a lot of our brothers are doing those things, but we have to create them and support them. And we have to, we have to market them into a point where we can become big, where we become a, a national product so that, and, and be able to export, import these products to our other melanated brothers and sisters throughout the what we call the African diaspora. We have to do that in order to pull ourselves about this slump because we weren't, you know, a lot of us don't know and don't remember because, you know, we're too, too young, but our people, we had banks, we had all these grocery stores. We had, you know, what they, you know, we only know of one, and that's Oklahoma. Um, what is that? Green. The uh, the uh, the one that everybody talks about. They burned down. Black Wall Street. Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wall Street. You know, we call it Black Wall Street, and that's the only that's the only one we hear about. But we don't understand that our people, 20, 30 years out of slavery, 20, 30 years out of you know, and in Jim Crow, they was living through Jim Crow at the time that they still were producing and creating businesses. We had our own businesses. They had our, their own. You know, a lot of was, oh, they had some, our some own. Exactly. Towns, yeah. Exactly. We had our own towns. You know, a lot of towns. I don't know if you watched this show, but I've watched Bass Reeves. I don't know if you watched that Bass Reeves show. I have been waiting for it to come on. And I started watching, hey, brother, when you get the time, please watch that show because it shows the time in history right after slavery in the 1870s, 1880s. Okay, And they're showing the people, they're showing us as we try to figure out what the next move is. And the one thing was going on was the West because the wild, wild West was still kind of there. You know, in the 1870s, the West wasn't fully um, civilized, if you will. And in the show, it talks about how some of these, they wanted to get black people, so-called black people together and take them to Oklahoma because Oklahoma 
was supposed to be for the Native Americans. Okay, like the United States has said, well, we're going to create Oklahoma as an Indian state. So a lot of so-called blacks were trying to go to Oklahoma. If you look now, I forgot, but there are there are over 36 uh, Native American uh, uh, nations in Oklahoma today. And black towns that are still in existence in Oklahoma today. You know. And so these things are not publicized, spoke about much, and definitely they're not patronized. Okay. But you know, with no with, with Morris American Week, this is why we are bringing and talking about these things right now today. Because the, the, the purpose of Noble Drew Ali bringing Morris American, American Week was for us to, like I said, not just to reflect, but for us to create the agenda for the next 20 years. What, are, what, is, our, what is our moves into securing our peace and tranquility for, for the upcoming generations? You know, so... You know that's kind of my my spiel on everything and, and, and what's going on. You know, um, speaking before I get up. Speaking of you know creating product. You know, first of all, like and subscribe to the channel, but also check out my books, Bandele, Elamine. Please check out my books on uh, Amazon. And my brother, if you I don't know if you got any of your books right now with you. But I would like you to also display your uh, books as well that you have. This one is a, a doctrine of economic security. This is volume one. That's uh, got the writings. Uh, it says the, the quote from Noble Drew Ali, it says the doctrine of economic security is by no means as widespread and intensive among Americans of our group as the circumstances demand. And the more written and said on the subject, the better. So that's a that that's coming from again the fundamental teachings of Noble Drew Ali, a doctrine of economic security. That's volume one. We also got volume three published, uh, which is comes strictly from the excerpts from the uh, Moorish Temple uh, Science, uh, the Moorish Science Temple of America, uh, Holy Quran excerpts about everything related to business, uh, enterprise, finance, and the like. Um, I'm at morezion.com, M-O-O-R-Z-I-O-N.com. That's our trading post. We got a number of products there available for you around uh, Moorish American knowledge and other knowledge. Uh, our uh, a book about the five-year economic plan is another book about economics and also my book on the uh, five fundamental pillars of uh, every business enterprise. Perfect, perfect. That's excellent. That's mad. So I do appreciate you know coming on, and like I said, this is twenty twenty four. We're gonna be doing more. Me and the brother are going to you know be be seen together a lot more this year because there's a lot of things that need to be done. And uh, you know, me and him been talking, and it's like we, we you know we said you know it's, this is it. This is the year. <laughs> this is the year to go hard, go hard or go home. You know so. It's, it's time you know it's, it's over time you know it's 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 been in it's been time and it's just right now it's you know i'm, I'm awakening again we're going to start bringing stuff together i tell the brother i need to get a new computer so i'm gonna start doing that so that we can uh you know facilitate some more things on on new camera tv but i i man i, I appreciate you coming on man much respect to you and what you bring to not just the temple but what you bring to our people man you do a lot of work you and and your sister you and your wife are doing a lot of work out here in the uh melanated community in the nation so i, I commend you brother for what you've done and what you're doing and i, I continue i, I give uh, i pray for that continued success uh for you and your wife in the work you're doing and for us to grow uh, in New Kimmet and uh, 
you know, that's pretty much it, man. Uh, I don't know if you have any last words or anything that you wanted to say. Yeah, man, uh, I want to uh, give some some shout outs, I guess, to uh, some of our favorite Moorish Americans, to all the Moorish American community extending blessings and love. You know, uh, Prophet Noble Drew Ali said to love instead of hate, you know, so it's just sending out as much love uh, to the Moorish American community, to Moorish Divine and National Movement, to all those great Moors um, that, that, that love the wisdom and knowledge and the understanding. Uh, some of my, my favorite, uh, you know, those Ohio Moors, you know, uh, being uh, in, in Dayton, all those Ohio Moors up there in Columbus. There's a, a beautiful Col- yes, Columbus couple up there. My brother, uh, 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 Michael uh, Bay and uh, the, the Muslim Mosque uh, 13 uh, doing doing great work. You know, there's a lot of uh, brothers in Maryland. Uh, in other areas, doing great work. So we just ex- extending love and honors, and, and we uh, yeah. thankful uh, and looking for a prosperous 2024. Sending shout outs to uh, the Moore Zion's Temple of Moore's Jews as well. Um, we got a lot of wisdom up there for you. Yes, uh, USS 13 on uh, moorezion.com. And so I'm looking forward to building more uh, with the brothers at, uh, and, and family at Moore's Temple of New Kemet. In this 2024 as well, uh, and all and all my, my my fellow FOI MGT um, brother brother Bandelay uh, Chief ba- Chief Bandelay um, our, our brother Tyrone Muhammad, you know uh, he was a, a giant in his own right, uh, and, and I, I believe a part of that brother uh, brother Bandelay Chief Bandelay that. Uh, that, that you are a, a good opportunity for um, FOI and MGT to, to, to come to you to dialogue with about the Moorish American teachings. You know, honors to, um, uh, we, some people call him Super K or Brother Kevin, uh, Hazim Muhammad, um, a great giant that passed uh, out of New York, uh, was the minister oh, there, sure. regional minister out of New York, Muhammad Moss, number seven. Uh, many people knew him uh, as Kevin Muhammad before, you know, uh, the minister gave him a name, but he was known, you know, to be an FOI that embraced uh, the Moors in New York and open dialogue, you know, and not all Moors are are, are welcome, welcome to that conversation. You know, it becomes a, a versus, right. versus then, uh, versus a we are one conversation, you know, so I appreciate, you know, uh, my brother at, uh, uh, the, 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 the mission, the Muslim mission uh, 13, I believe it is in Columbus, because he's another brother uh, and, and, his, and his queen that are open, you know, to have those dialogues because, uh, you know, coming up under the teachings of uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and uh, through, through the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, you know, it can be, uh, it, it can be unnecessary friction. Again, you know, not that we are one, but it's ours versus, you know, so you know, the, the message is really unity. You know, uh, Elijah Muhammad said our unity is greater than an atomic weapon. You know, and if you look on your, your Muslim card, you're going to see unity as one of the principles as that great prophet, Noble Drew Ali. So, um, you know, Queen Latifah had that U-N-I-T-Y. That's a unity. Yeah. U-N-I-T. And so uh, that Asiatic, you know, that Asia, come all ye Asiatics, you know. So uh, Moorishtown.com. Uh, you will be hearing more from Morristown.com. We divinely inspire to uh, to promote a doctrine of economic security and to continue to preach economic security. I'm at more more trading post.com or excuse me, more trading post on YouTube. And we've been uh, maintaining that subject matter, the doctrine of economic security, because Noble Drew Ali said there's nothing more important than to preach economic security. And so the morezion.com is about trade and commerce. It's about being industrious. You know, if you if you study your uh, Circle 7 or uh, Holy Quran or the More Science Temple of America, he talks about being industrious. And he says, husbands, take care of your wives and children be industrious. You know, but how can the children be industrious if the parents are not industrious, if they don't have an industrious environment to grow up around? And so we want to make sure that we are striving and striding to be industrious moors to uh to engage in trade and commerce with with moors and offer products and services 
that are necessary with Moors. And shout out to my beautiful wife, Zakia Sankar Jabbar, because she is a great supporter of cooperative economics, making sure that I spend less money with Amazon and spend more money with our brothers and our own family, you know, making sure that I go the extra mile, go the extra block, turn the extra corner to uh, support uh, a Moorish American store, a black owned store, a store of our group of people, as Noble Drew Ali would say, uh, making sure that as long as they had the same valuable product and service that I needed and, and that I consume. So we want to produce what we consume and uh, preach this doctrine of economic security. Shout out to New Kim and TV. I appreciate you, uh, Chief Bandelay, lifting up Brother Tyrone Muhammad's name again, lifting up Athlete yes, Gatsby's name say. again. You know, I say. Uh, look forward to uh, building with you and King L. Bay and the rest of the uh, Moorish Americans and uh, spiritualists at uh, the Moorish Temple of New Kimmy. Much love to Dayton, Ohio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jim Big City. Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> yes, sir. Jim City. <laughs> All right, brother. I appreciate you. And we will do this again. Yes, sir. Peace and love. Peace. Peace.